Welcome today to Mylet TV. Today we talk about brake components, the Mylet PD brake components. Um, therefore, we have invited Mr. Stefan Bachmann. He is yep. the head of brake development in our company. And yes, we will discuss some topics with him regarding the PD brakes. Yep. Stefan, um, maybe you introduce yourself mm -hmm. and um, yeah, tell us a little bit uh, what you do here in the company. Okay. Yeah, so first of all, my name is Stefan Bachmann. Um, I've been working for Mylan now since a little bit more than nine years. Um, so and I'm the head of the braking department, uh, braking drivetrain department. Um, and I'm 37 years old and uh, happy to be here today to talk a little bit with you and also with you about some brake components. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as we see here already, we have different brake components. Brake pads are different for each and every application. Mm -hmm. And why is it the case? Maybe you can give us a little bit of an yeah. insight. First of all, we, we have to start with the, with the brake pad categories itself. So we have uh, a couple of different categories. Um, one is the, the low metallic brake pad, um, one is the semi-metallic brake pad. We have ceramic brake pads, we have NAO brake pads and um, all of them they have a different focus and um, when it comes to the car uh, we talk about heavy cars, uh, low weight cars, we yeah. talk about transporters for example. So in Germany we, we have a Another special situation, which is called the German Autobahn, yes. um, and you may know it that we uh, partially uh, don't have a high speed limit, and um, the requirements for brake pads um, when when braking from 200 and, and more kilometers per hour, um, or making an emergency brake from this kind of uh, speed, yeah. um, this is a very special requirement for a brake pad. So uh, this is a very tough condition. Yeah, yeah. Stefan. Um, there are, as we see here, some brake pads, for example, they have this kind of coating mm -hmm. on them. Why, why is that? Why other brake pads yeah. don't have it? Yeah. This coating makes sure that the break-in distance after the repair is done, after the maintenance job is done, um, when the car rolls out of the garage, um, this, this coating makes sure that the break-in distance is as short as possible. Um, this is depending on the friction material we are using. For example, um, when it comes to, to that friction material, we are talking about um, yeah, cars with a higher load or mid-class up to, to uh, high-class cars um, where, where the, the weight is, is definitely much higher than for a smaller car, for example. And um, we just make sure with that coating that the, the braking distance is much shorter. Um, whereas this friction material we are using, the break-in distance is already short. Yeah. If we would bring the coating on that one here, there will be no positive effect. Yes. And this also underlines that our pads are definitely individually um, designed and developed for each car application. Yes. Yeah, that is good to know because several people wondered already why this is the case with that one pad has the coating, yeah. one pad doesn't have. Actually, actually, uh, people are already asking just for the pads with the coating. Um, we are wondering a little bit about that um, because this is not only a feature. Actually, it's some kind of safety issue also. Um, and we also, we always have to, yeah, more or less refuse uh, in saying no. We will not bring the coating on all the brake pads because it's not necessary. Uh, we just use it where it is really necessary and uh, where we can see an advantage. Yeah. Okay. Stefan, uh, on all Mile brake pads and brake discs we see the ECER 90 stamp on it. Yeah. What does it actually say? Why is it required? So, first of all, <coughs> the, the ECE is um, a European, um, yeah, some European rules and regulations. Um, mainly also for, <coughs> for, for safety parts and uh, these regulations shall make sure that um, safety parts not only for, for passenger cars um, do perform on a certain or minimum um, performance level. 
it's not that we can put the, the brake pads and the disc on the, on the dyno and we just tell someone our friction value is okay. No, no, we have to send these brake pads to independent agencies mm. and these agencies, they do the testings and uh, the results of the test, um, they are forwarded to, to national authorities and uh, they will release the brake pad itself. Um, they will do the documentation for that and uh, that's where the ECR90 number is coming from. Thank you. And when it comes to brake pads and brake discs, we are talking about the regulation number 90. And the regulation number 90 um, requires from us that our brake pads um, do have a certain performance which is very similar to the, um, to the original brake pad. And um, talking about uh, my LPD brake pads, for example, so we meet and exceed um, the ECR 90 requirements. But I have to say, that exceeding means not more than 15% because uh, friction value difference. Friction then. value difference because yes. this is the upper limit, and uh, when focusing on performance, so we are going um, on the upper limit. Um, if we would go above, we would not get the certification for that. Mm. And the second point is um, that we go into an area where we start talking about hotspots and so on, but. Talking about hotspots today would be too much. Uh, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Would take us the whole day. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, some people say they notice more and more squeaking with brakes on yeah. the road. Uh, why? Why do we hear more squeaking? Brakes squeaking in the last, let's say, ten years. Uh, <clears throat> the reason, one of the reasons for that is um, that we want and partially have to reduce um, some ingredients of the brake pad friction material. Um, one of the ingredients, you may remember asbestos, many, yeah, many, yeah. many years ago, uh, decades ago. Decades um, ago. And um, so the asbestos is, is, definitely, is definitely gone. Uh, even if some people uh, still right. print on the box uh, <laughs> asbestos free. Mm. Um, no, but this is the standard today, yeah, asbestos free. Sure. And when it comes to, to noise issues, for example, um, we talk about an ingredient like copper, for example. We have to reduce copper more and more. Um, these are requirements from different areas in the world by law. Mm. And um, our decision wa was um, to, to meet the requirement level from 2023. Um, and our copper content uh, inside the fridge material is below 0.5%. Um, which you can also see on our label, there are three black leaves and um, these confirm that uh, our copper content is uh, almost zero. And um, this is just one of the reasons. Um, there is not only the one reason for, for squeaking, um, but we tried to manage it or we managed it better, better saying um, in we changed the formulation. Um, we have a different chamfering. We have an individual chamfering for the cars. <coughs> um, these are um, we use a triple air shim. Um, these are all um, yeah details individually developed um, to make sure that our brake pads are still the quietest ones. If you look into the future, mm -hmm. what what do we do here at Mile when let's say? Maybe you can give us a look out yeah. 10 years ahead. What do we have to do with brakes and brake pads? 10 years ahead is a little bit difficult because as, as you also may have recognized that uh, the market is changing dramatically. Um, for example, electronic mobility. Um, everybody's talking about that, but the cars on the road we see is not much for the moment. Um, at least our focus will be on um, keeping the pads operating quiet and um, uh, strict focus on reducing some emissions. Emission means um, we, have a, we have a certain level of brake dust development. Um, this is impossible to avoid by 100% today um, because we have friction between the brake disc and the, and the brake pad and the dust is, is coming out of that. So we want to reduce the dust more and more. Our PT pads are already on an equal level um, with ceramic brake pads, so they keep your wheels clean. And um, emission reduction also means that we focus 
um, in our plans in the, on the production side um, because for example when we use the, the coating for the brake discs um, we have to yeah let's say burn it more or less or it has to be dried after coating and um, this also needs a lot of energy and um, our focus is also reducing these kind of energy so that our global um, footprint uh, when it comes to environmental topics um, is getting smaller and smaller. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much Stefan for all your uh, insights here thank into you. the topic breaks. We will see us again soon at Marle TV and uh, see you soon again. Thank you bye very bye. much. Bye. 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 bye.